Hello and welcome to this week's Inspire Q&A. This is video seven in our series in the Eildon West Learning Community. I'm Roddy Graham and this is going to be our second last Q&A video in this format because after Easter we're going to be changing it from a learning and teaching Q&A to more of an aspects of learning way. So we're going to look at things like early years, outdoor learning, PE, science and how you can use the Inspire program in those different ways. On this week's Q&A, we're going to be looking at using the Numbers app to create some simple graphs and tables. We're going to be setting up a live classroom Kahoot to use questions and answers on the pupils' devices using a new tool that's just been launched by Kahoot. And finally, we're going to be creating a short storybook using Pages templates built into the iPad. Our first topic this week is graphs using the Numbers app. The question is, my class, a primary five class, are focusing on information handling in their math learning. Is the app Numbers easy to use at that level? So Numbers app is the Apple equivalent to Microsoft Excel, which I'm sure a lot of you will be familiar with. Um, on Numbers, there are built-in templates and this makes it very easy to use, even with beginners in their learning. So I'd say the Numbers app would be perfect for primary fives to use. There are simple Simple tables, there are simple graphs which can be edited and created very quickly within the app. And there's also different styles of graphs which make it engaging for learners as well. So what I'll do is I'll guide you through how to uh, download the app, how to set up the tables and the graphs using the templates, and then how you can edit them to look as interesting as you can. So the Apple equivalent of Excel is called Numbers and you can find that inside the self-service. It's green, it looks like a graph and you can install it just from there. So when you open it up, uh, if you've used it before, you'll have your recent folders there. But to open up a brand new document, it's the plus in the top right hand corner. And from there, there's loads of different templates. Now there's many, many of them that we're never gonna use in primary school, but there are a few that are quite handy. And the table and chart one is the one that I'm gonna go through today. Because when you open that one up, you can see the chart is above and the table is below, and it's already put in some examples there. So it's a working example already set up. What you can then do is you can change the categories, you can change the items, you can add in different things as well if you want to, and then you can have your full thing shown. So for example, say we were doing a table and our table was about favourite fruit in the class. You could then put your wee items in here, so you could have apples, and if you want you can even then go onto the wee emoji thing here, which I quite like using in class. And then if you come into food, you can find a wee photo of the apple. There should be one somewhere. There we go. So there's the apple. You can then put in here. You can put banana. I think there's a banana in the emojis. Let's have a little look and see. There we go. And I'll just do one more just to show you this one. And let's just make sure it's one that's in the list. We will go with, why don't we go for strawberry? Okay, so there we have our three choices in. Now, if you want to put more in, you obviously can, but you don't need to. If you've got three that you've got in like I have, and then you want to get rid of the other ones, all you need to do is press it there, and then it gives you a delete option. So it takes it away from the table, and it automatically updates the table above too. So you might then just want to have just one category. So you might want to delete these ones that are here, that are on the end. And then just change this to number of pupils. And there you have a very, very basic table created and a chart above. Now what you can then do is you can then change the title and you can say favorite fruit. And then you can then press on the table like so and then you're able to change the way that it looks. So if you can want to put different colors in, it gives you the option to do that. If you go into chart type, there's loads of different examples of ways that you can have it. So you could have a bar column coming out um, horizontally. You could have a 2D graph like so. You could have a scatter graph. You could even have some 3D graphs, which I think are quite cool as they really show um, some real detail on the graph and how it is built up. So you can have different things. You can have pupils then talking about it, saving their work elsewhere, etc. But this is a very, very basic idea of how you can create it. If you then want to do something different and you want to maybe do a comparison graph, then you could do that very simply. So we can edit this one here. And rather than say number of pupils, we could have boys 
And then we could add in one for girls, pop in some numbers. And then if you come back to your table and then change it to a 2D column, so the way that you then turn this into a comparison table is you need to press on the table up here. You press the paintbrush and you go edit references and then you include the girls part there. What you can then do is you can then press done and you can see that you've now got your comparison table there. What you might then want to do is change the color slightly so it makes it a bit clearer as to what is what. And then you've got your boys in blue, your girls in green, and you can see the answers that are down below there too. So it's a very simple way using the built-in features of numbers to build up a digital uh, spreadsheet with tables and with charts. Our next topic this week is Kahoot questions and answers. The question is, I'm not able to share my iPad onto my smart board yet, but I'm keen to use Kahoot live in the classroom for formative assessment. Is this possible in this situation? Well, previously you would have had to use your computer in your room connected to your smart board and log into the Kahoot website to, to, uh, to use it in that way and display the questions on the board because before about a fortnight ago, you were only able to do the live cahoots whereby pupils had the options in front of them in terms of red, blue, green, and yellow, and they had to press the button linked to the question on the screen. But there is now a new feature on Kahoot, which allows the questions and the answers to be displayed on pupils' devices for live quizzes. Um, so as I said previously, they could only be used um, on the smart board, but now they have the option on their own device. So we've got the best of both worlds. They can have them displayed on both places and uh, it works really, really well. So I'm gonna show you a wee example of how to set it up on your iPad and then also how you're able to see it on the pupils' iPads. So we've spoken previously about Kahoot during these video sessions and something that's launched recently on Kahoot is the option when you're playing a live quiz in your classroom for the questions and the answers to be displayed on the pupils' devices so that they can read them for themselves on their own device rather than looking at the smart board. So if I choose this friendship quiz here, for example, uh, if I go to play and then I choose teach for virtual classrooms, that's the same as being within a... a a face-to-face -face classroom as well. If we click on that, it will give us the option in a wee second. It takes a, a few seconds to load. It's obviously a fair bit of data involved in it. But you can see here that you get some game options. Now, if you go to the classic one, when you're using one-to-one -one devices with P4s to 7s, that would be the option that you choose. But turn on where it says, show question and answers on players' devices. And this allows them to be able to see that on their screen. Now, obviously during home learning, that would have been a great tool to have because it would have made it so much easier than sharing screens or splitting screens or, or so forth but it's also very good for the classroom as well so if we do that and then we press on classic it'll set up the game pin i'm going to turn down the volume so we don't get the lobby music and then i'm hopefully going to be able to show you the code on here so i'm going to copy the code and then i'm going to come on to safari and enter the pin in here and i'm hoping that i'll be able to sweep between the two screens and then show you it in action okay so i'm in on here and i'm in there too i'm going to start it now and then so previously i would have to have my ipad or computer connected to the smart board in order to show these questions so a good friend is someone who you can trust helps you when you're in need you can share your secrets all of the above but if i now come back into here the questions and the answers are also there so therefore i can press all of the above get that one correct and I score my points like so. So it's a very helpful way of having it on there. The pupils can have it on their devices in front of them the whole time. They don't need to be looking at the smart board and then looking at the options in front of them in terms of the red, green, uh, blue and yellow. They can just see the whole thing on one screen. So it's a really helpful addition and I really like the, the fact that Kahoot have chosen to do this as part of their app. And our final topic today is short stories on pages. Their question is, I'd like to use some primary one drawings to create storybooks. Is there a simple way for me to do this? So one option which we've covered previously in these videos is using Book Creator. But today I'm going to show you how you can use the app of pages using the lovely story template that's built in. And it works really nicely. And I would say it almost particularly nicely for early years. Uh, it's simple to use. It's user friendly. And it has the abilities to combine both photos and text in the 
the same place. What you can also do with this, and I will show you an example of how to do this, is you can also publish it as what's called an EPUB file, and that's a digital book. So they can have that digital version of their story and they can have it on their devices or you can send it home to parents as well. So I'll guide you through that in the next bit of the video. And finally today, we're gonna to have a look at pages where we're gonna do some examples of storybooks. If we press on the plus in the top right hand corner, we're given the templates again. And one of the really nice ones that I like using is in books and it's called story. So you can see the little uh, kitty that's there, kitty's morning walk. If we press on that, it opens up the template. And then from there, you are able to edit page by page the bits that follow, okay? So what I've got here today is if I go into my photos by choosing photo or video, I've got some drawings here from Primary One Pupils. So this first one is a, a lollipop man. So I'm gonna call this story here, uh, People Who Help Us. I'm gonna say this is by Primary One, okay? I can then come onto the next page and I can put in here another photo so I can choose my police officer that's here. I can double click it and make sure that it fills in the screen like so. I could then edit this text and say police officers. So and then I could change the little bit here. I could say that this was by and then just call them pupil A for the example. And then we can maybe even write in here what the pupils tell us about this. So we could say the people or the people I have chosen to draw are police officers. They help to keep us safe in our community. Okay, and then if we go into one more page, we can just add the other photo in here that I've got, just like so. And we can see that we've now got our three photos in. I'm going to just delete this page at the end so that we've only got a three page thing. So we've got people who help us. We've got the police officers by the people that we've got and what they've said. And then the final one there. So as it currently stands, that is just a pages document. So it's just like having a word document, a word processing document. And that's all that it is. What we can then do with it though, is we've got the ability to turn this into a book digitally on the iPads. So what you could do is you could press the three dots menu at the top right hand corner and then press export. And if you choose the option in the middle that says EPUB, that is the digital book version on iPads. So if we change our title, we call that people who help us. and then we change the author's name to primary one. We can then say, use the first page as the book cover image, or we can choose another image as that if we want to. You don't really need to go into um, the advanced part, but if you wanna do that, then you're more than welcome to. Then press on export, and it'll take a couple of seconds just to create our EPUB. And then you can see that we are able to open it in the app called Books, and Books is where you can have digital books on your iPad. So if I press on books now, it will copy it into the app for me. It'll take a couple of seconds just to load it all up. And then it should open it up as a book. So now I have the ability to turn the pages over and move between the pages. Okay, so it's a really nice way to create something which is, is special within your class, but then you can also send that to other people across school. You can send it to parents as well for them to open on their devices as well. Okay, so you can see there that it opens up in that way. What we can also do if we go back to pages is we could then save it in files as well. If we can click on that option, it's maybe not gonna let me do it just now. The other option that you could use if you don't wanna use the books app is the Kindle app and then it will save a copy uh, to there as well, which is really quite nice as well. So that's the way that you can do it. You can save that as an actual digital book, and then you're able to share it with people that you would like to choose to, to do so, okay? So very, very simple. You just add in the photos, change the text, and then you're able to go from there. One of the other beauties of having this here is, if I can just very quickly find it, the little bit at the bottom is missing for some reason. Let me see if I can come back onto it this way. There we have it. So now at the bottom of our screen in the left-hand corner, there's a plus option where you can choose to put some different uh, styles 
of built-in work in. So you could have your introduction, you could have a left text with an image, you could have an about the author page as well. You can edit your cover there as well uh, if you'd like to do that as well. So there's lots of different ways that you can do this when you're adding pages on. So it's a really cool tool. Um, it's very simple to use. It's built in already. You don't need to download anything extra. Pages is built into the iPads already. So you can have a little shot with that if you think it would be handy in your classes. And that is your seventh video done and dusted. Um, if you have any questions for the final Q&A video, which is going to go out next Friday, please email them to gw 12 grahamroddy 3 at glow.seh.uk. There will still be new videos going out every Friday after Easter. But as I said at the start of the video, these are going to have a focus on different aspects of the curriculum. If you subscribe to the channel, you'll get those new videos straight away once I upload them. And if you don't subscribe, then you'll have to wait for your head teachers to email you the link over. Uh, thanks again for watching. If you've got any questions for the final Q&A next week, please send them in and I'll get those answered for you. Take care and speak soon.